Hello guys, uh, welcome to another video of ADO.NET with .NET Core or uh, you can follow the similar steps for MVC as well. Uh, pretty much it matches uh, many things. Uh, so in this video, we are going to try and create a record for the database. If we are looking at my database, this is my database and we are trying to create another row using our um, web API and uh, that we are going to use it uh, adio.net and see how it works okay so this is in continuous run to the previous one where uh, we tried to fetch data from the records if anyone is visiting this for the first time uh, well i will let you know what things we have done here uh, opening your visual studio and then you are selecting your asp.net core web api so this is the one that you select you follow the next one, type your location, select the project name, and then you move on forward. After moving on forward, uh, I selected .NET 6. If you're selecting .NET 5 or Core 3.1, then you will have a startup.cs, which is not in 6 or 7 or next versions. Uh, HTTPS, for the time being, I'm removing it. If you want to use that, no problem. Uh, the browser will only ask to trust the certificate for the default HTTPS. Uh, otherwise, everything remains the same. So post this, you would uh, reach a screen which will be something like this. Uh, once you reach here, uh, you will see something like this. So, so you would see something like this. And then you are going to add a controller uh, to the uh, controllers uh, folder. Uh, you should have a models folder wherein you will mention your class files or the column names that matches with your table like this. And then uh, the controller, please uh, remember that you are going to add a controller. And then from the controller section, you are going to add uh, API controller. Okay, not this one, the API controller, this one. Okay, so once you are done with this one, your controller will look something like this. Okay, so you have to um add few things like the configuration i configuration this one because this is going to pull the configuration string uh, from your app settings dot json if you are looking at it for the first time so here this is the connection string that we mentioned in the app settings dot json and we are uh, passing a reference uh, to it from the controllers uh, with the i configuration and initializing that in the constructor and then uh, we have two variables con string and command cmd that is from the data dot sql client so those things are uh, uh, let me show you the nuggets that we have uh, installed in this uh, project. So these are the nuggets that we have uh, installed in this project and uh, it's working fine as of now. Uh, have a look at the program.cs file. The program.cs file looks like this. Okay, pretty much this much. Uh, make sure that the controller class is not inheriting from the controller base. It's only the controller. Okay, so guys who have already seen the previous part the one that fetches the record uh, let's move ahead to the create section so in the create section it's an action result create and it's not returning anything so it's just returning an okay or a bad request okay uh, no views here and also it's not of any type like a void or any um, uh, model type okay so what things we did here connection string is initialized with the connection variable again uh, command is initialized with a command uh, text so the query insert query is in it we're not passing any value to the serial number or the id column as it's an auto generated thing uh, rest all things we are passing the object of a class and we are passing the values to the object uh, using our uh, class name the class name object uh, dot the column name uh, these are the values that we are going to receive from the api and then we are opening the connection string and uh, moving ahead to the execute non query keeping all these things within a try catch block so if anything occurs we are going to handle it at the exception and that thing goes ahead with the message that's passed to the uh, api's output okay now if everything goes well uh, we will show a message of record added um, going on further uh, we will just run this program so pretty much a create has nothing much to do just these uh, queries and few statements to run ahead and uh, you should have your ui yes i forgot to mention one more thing here if you created uh, this action method without the post you are going to going to get an error okay this is going to throw an error unless in case of your um, 
views or in case of your web application you will not get an error because this is picked up as a get request so it will by default look up for a get request and try to fetch that but if you do not have a get or post on the method name uh, api is going to throw an error okay so that's how you have to fix this make sure you have this thing uh, mention it what is the kind of uh, uh, request post or a get and then you have these queries so let's go ahead run it and uh, test it with our data and see if it goes through and if it goes through what request uh, what uh, message do we get so pretty much we got the api's request here uh, and it's giving us a sample as to how you would do that let's go ahead with the try it and i'm trying i'm trying to send some data to the student name let's say um let's say kareem and age let's pass it uh, let's first of all uh, let me try to do a character here okay the model will not take it okay see this i'm trying to put a character here it will throw an error right away it will not even pass that value okay but if you are going to uh, pass it like a string and then execute then also it doesn't go through okay it's not going through so you have to give a numeric value so even if it's within the string it will still be taken care of okay uh, let's give it an address let's say you can put the double quotes it's not required though you can have it or you may not have it but as long as you are passing a number in it it's good enough okay it's going to hit our uh, Okay, so now you can see that it says a record has been added. Let's go to our database and check that. Perfect. We see this. Okay. So same thing, we are going to pass it in the postman. As long as postman tries opening up, I will copy all those things. And I will... API create. Where is that one? I think Swagger uh, Swagger takes care of the post. This was supposed to be a create thing. It's just picked up uh, the HTTP get and post. Otherwise, if there are multiple HTTP posts here and we do not mention the uh, the routing is by default it's going to uh, hit the post one the first post uh, request it's going to hit there okay so even if uh, i continue with this one it will go through and it will give us the message that the record has been added but this is not the correct uh, format uh, rather it should go to the particular url okay it should go to Okay, guys, so um, you can have a look at this one. Uh, we made a route and in brackets, the name of that action method, okay? Simply the name of that action method. So what's it's going to hit? It's going to hit the API slash the controller name that students slash this action method, okay? If you don't even, you can put in your uh, custom route name here for this action method. Now, when I'm doing this, what do I get? I get something like this. I get something like this. Now, uh, if I'm trying to fetch it uh, from uh, uh, from uh, from Postman, how would I do that? Well, it's API slash students slash create. Now, let's change a few things here. How do I clear that? Okay, it came here. Now let's check the values in the mod class. Yes, we did receive some values. And uh, let's continue with this one and see if it goes through. Yes, it did. Okay, now let's try to check that. Yes, we got it. Okay, guys, so that much 
for this video nothing more than this one uh, we will continue ahead with the uh, this is the insert update and delete we will continue ahead with a few more videos uh, stay tuned stay connected until then happy coding thank you